Okay, we're going to be going over some of the basic game systems and gameplay of the first scenario, Start of the Nightmare, from the game Okinawa, from Tiny Battle Publishing. Start of the Nightmare, this scenario covers the battle from the U.S. landing to the first U.S. stop in front of the Shuri Line. It is a good introduction to the game covering landings, Japanese reserves, and potential counterattacks. It does not cover the air campaign. The length of the scenario is turn 1 to turn 4. I have the game mostly set up to play the uh, initial scenario. I did want to point out some special rules. U.S. Landings. On turn 1, U.S. units can land only in invasion hexes in the Hagushi sector, which is located in this area right here. And I did find out that the little green arrows are kind of hard to see. These are the um, amphibious landing indicators, not this dark whatever it was I thought um, was coastline and stuff. It's actually where the green arrows pointing towards a land hex side are. Anyway, just want to clear that up. And let's see. The sector includes the contiguous landing hexes between 0505, which is, oops, this hex right here, and 0613, this hex here. So all along here is where we can invade from on the first turn. <clears throat> Then we have the 2nd Marine Division demonstration. While the 10th Army was landing on the Hagushi sector, the 2nd Marine Division was staging a demonstration landing at Minotoga, fixing the attention of the Japanese command. No Japanese reserves or artillery can be used on turn 1. And finally, victory conditions. The U.S. player wins if, by the end of turn 4, he controls northern Okinawa, which is this box over here. He has to exit units up there at the top of the map and then they'll be considered here in the Northern Okinawa box. Um, Ishima, which is over here, which I think you have to go do a minor landing to get to it. Um, let's see. Shuri, which is right here. Yantan, uh, I think is up here. That's why I have the little green discs there to tell me which ones are uh, victory conditions. I guess I should just look at them. Uh, Kadena, which is Kadena. Actually, that's Kadena, I believe. And the Mashinato Airfields, which is down here. So basically everything with the green disc on it <clears throat> they have to control. Uh, if he controls all of the above except Shuri and Mashinato it is a draw. Any other result is a Japanese player victory and the killing continues as the Imperial Japanese headquarters expects. We're going to follow the sequence of play as much as possible. First thing we have is one, the reinforcement and amphibious assault phase. This phase allows the U.S. player to deploy troops on Okinawa via the, via the amphibious assault procedure. There are differences between the main landing, game turn one, and subsequent landings, game turn two and onwards. So the first thing we are going to do <coughs> is we're going to land some uh, units onto some uh, beachheads. The only way for the U.S. to enter the battle is to physically land on Okinawa by means of amphibious assault. So, the major landing, the U.S. player performs a major landing on game turn one. Afterwards, all landings are minor. In the major landing, up to four divisions and attached tanks can participate. And a major landing is composed of three segments, an assault wave, an exploitation, and a reserve landing segment. 
one thing I guess I wanted to point out real quick was we're going to concentrate right here on this division, the sixth division, and then we will go on down, taking a look at the others, the seventh division, and the ninety-sixth, and there should be another one there. One's in the blue. Are they the first? What are these? They're the first Marines. So we're going to use those for examples, at least for now. And then we will probably, I'll move along and just try to cover each, a part of each phase or whatever of the uh, sequence of play. So first thing we're going to do is, I guess we're going to land our units. We have to follow the little green arrow here. This one's pointing towards this hex site up here, so we'll land that marine unit there. We'll land this uh, other marine unit along with the amphibious tank to this hex, because that's where the arrow points. These two regiments will go up here. Well, actually, I think it's just one regiment and a tank. Uh, let me find my uh, handy dandy forceps here. Yes, it's a tank and a marine regiment. One thing I do want to point out are these counters. On the edges, they're very sticky. I think this has something to do with the uh, material they used to adhere the counters um, front and backs, but they're very, very sticky. So, just kind of have to watch that. And let's see, we'll just take care of that division that's up there for the moment. Just this uh, six Marine. So everybody's made it to a landing hex in the six Marine. That's called the assault wave. In this segment, each landing division can deploy two regiments and attached tank units. Maximum of one tank battalion and one amphibious tank battalion per division. In one or two invasion hexes. Oh, well, I guess I need to pay more attention to this. All selected invasion hexes must be contiguous, adjacent to each other. Once all assault units have been placed, they attack the beachhead hexes directly in front of their invasion hexes. If the beachhead is empty, the unit simply occupies it. Otherwise, full combat is performed, including the use of air, artillery, and naval support, and Japanese reserves. If the U.S. units succeed in clearing the beachhead, they advance into it. Otherwise, they are returned to the floating reserve. So, let me read that again. The first part. In this segment, each landing division can deploy two regiments and an atta and attached tank units. Okay, in one or two hexes. Now let me uh, let me redo that then. One or two regiments. Well, I guess that's one regiment. That's two regiments. We have the tank and uh, amphibious tank. So basically, other than this unit, I did it pretty much right. Now we have the exploitation segment. All units that have successfully occupied a beachhead may advance one, may advance one additional hex. So we will move the fourth marine uh, fourth marine regiment of the sixth marine division Ugh, these things are so sticky one hex to here in this amphibious unit uh, pardon my fumbling here and then we can move the 29th Marine Regiment of the 6th Division onto Yonton Air Base and the uh, Japanese Defending Unit. Japanese Defending Unit is... There is no Japanese Defending Unit. It's just Yonton seems to be under their control. 
So it looks like we'll capture the Anton Air Base, perhaps. Let's see. Then the final step is the reserve landings. The remaining regiments from the assault divisions can now land in beachhead hexes that have been occupied in the assault wave. Also, the U.S. player may place up to two beachhead markers in two occupied beachheads. The game turn and then proceeds to the command phase. Well, we still have to go... I need to check out what happens when you enter... Uh, enter the Yonton Air Base Hex and see what that's all about. So, I'll be back in a minute. Looks like all I have to do is move into the hex to capture it. So that basically meets uh, part of the uh, U.S. Victor conditions by capturing the Yonton Airport. So we just flip this over to the American side. And I will basically put a con um, victory point marker under it. Or my American victory uh, hex marker under it, and then we'll replace the uh, two marine units, putting them on top of the uh, newly captured uh, air base. And that's basically how that works. We then have, like I said, I think it's a follow-up, reserve landings, remaining uh, regiments from the assault divisions. Uh, can now land in beachhead hexes that have been uh, occupied in the, in the assault wave. And I can put the two beachhead markers, but I'm not going to right now. I only have two, and I'll probably use one for Ishima. And the other one, I'm not sure where I'll put it at. But anyway, we'll land... Um, land him right there. So, that is basically a major <coughs> amphibious assault, major landing. I'm going to go ahead and resolve the others off camera, and we'll come back and work on the next part of the sequence of play, which is the command phase. So, we'll see you then. Later.